I just want to say that I don't have any cool Rotten Tomatoes MS Paint scoreboard or anything. So what I'm going to do is when you tell me the movie, there's we're going to have a gentleman's agreement. Mm. I'm going to open the Wikipedia page for that movie, but I'm not going to scroll. I'm not. I would. That's the danger because nuts they, they on the table. I'm not going down to reception. I'm not going to box office or anything like that. It's just to have something on the screen for chat to look at. Otherwise, my whole chat will just be like, "What are we looking at?" Makes perfect sense. I, I honestly, I almost wanted to just consider this like a, a, a effectively a podcast, as there's really not going to be a big visual element on my side either, besides the scoreboard. But yeah, uh, that that does sound good. But again, just the I mean. I, I, if you're anything like me, the, the, the temptation to avert your gaze just that slightest bit down to the bottom right with all the percentages is going to be strong. So I'm, just, hoping, just resist. I'm hoping that most of these movies are going to be um, noteworthy enough that the Wikipedia article will be long enough that I will not see the reception on the homepage. Did you, uh, did you happen to prepare a few or are you going off the top of the dome? I'll go off the top of the dome. I like that. I, I, I think that's, that's a good approach, especially uh, to be complimentary to my short little list I prepared. Mostly, I got a little list made because I wanted to uh, at least be able to provide like some sort of conversation about the movie. Because there's I, not course. a lot recently that I've seen, so I've got a few of my preferred classics. But we got a couple of the new stuff, or a couple of new ones in there, too. I'm so ready. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so without further ado, welcome everybody. It's Guess the Rotten Tomato Score with Bear and Northern Lion. I stole this idea from other YouTubers, but that's that's, okay. that's the way to do it. That's just how YouTube works these days, and it just seems like a fun idea. So we're gonna go for it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're gonna take turns suggesting films, and then we're gonna talk about the movies for a little bit, and then we're gonna guess what we think was the critic score and the audience score on Rotten Ooh, Tomatoes okay. for that movie. We're gonna get a point. For getting the closest to the critic score, we're going to get a point for getting closest to the audience score. So there's a total of two points available per film. Cool. Okay, so you don't know the other, you don't know the results either. No, not at all. I, I have no idea of the critic or audience scores for any of the movies I'm about to list. But then how did you pick the movie? You're just going to have to find out. Man. Well, all right, all right. <laughs> I did try to get a mix of what I thought would be like higher rated films and lower rated stuff and a couple in between too. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. You want to just get going? Let's I'll offer our it. first option. All right. I'm going to start us off. I'm going to bring us uh, back just a little bit to, I think it was 2012. Okay. I want to say for Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Okay. I'm, Cabin in I'm, the Woods. I'm just going to Google it and do my damnedest not Can, you to Don't care with the Google. I went to wikipedia.org. We're good. I got okay, it. Okay, okay. So I'm going to tell you that I, Cabin in the Woods, have you seen it? I have. I'm going to guess that you enjoy this movie a lot. I do. I liked it quite a bit. I also enjoy this movie quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I, um, if I remember correctly, I used to go to Rotten Tomatoes like every day. Uh, well, That's at why I was kind of worried about playing this with you because I was like, this dude has probably retained maybe like 75% of the film scores that he's seen. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. And I, I feel like I recall Cabot in the Woods having a ridiculously high Rotten Tomatoes critic score that I'm going to say is 92. Ooh, wow. Okay. And then, uh, well, I don't see, know. I was, I was wondering, man, because like I, I, I know that in the moment it was like so, like, it subverted people so well. Like obviously in, in hindsight, I think a, a couple more movies have gone this route, but this was the first to really just sort of take it in this direction. So I guess it makes sense that it would be that high of the critical acclaim. I think the audience reception is going to be even higher, but you can't get much higher than 92. That's up there. Would you like to make your critics guess, or do you want me to yeet an audience score out there as well? Uh, let me hear your audience score, too, and then I'll, I'll give you both of mine. <laughs> My hypothesis for this is that the audience score will also be high, but I think two things are going to pull it below the critic score. One yeah. is a, a twist this outrageous. I think, like, 8% of the population just rejects it. As soon as it happens, no matter how good a twist is, they just go, oh, come on. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I have had that response, too, but this one didn't give me that. This one 
despite even having been like spoiled a little bit on what was going to happen with this one too, it still, it still worked out for me. I think especially because of like the way that they like minor spoiler alert, but like they, they, they do like dive deeper into it and like really uh, explore what's going on with the underground element of things. And they the, do. They the cool Stanley way. parable it. Yeah, definitely. All right. I, I think my... it's going to be, I'm going to say 87. So 92 okay, critics, okay. 87 audience is my, that's my gut check. I, I think you've actually sold me on the idea of going even higher for my critics score. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and say critics were up at a 96. I'm going to say they absolutely love this one. I'm going to say audiences up there. I'm going to go with a 97 audience. I think this is a, a well-loved film for a lot of reasons. All right. So let's let's re uh, recap on that. You you went with a 92 critic and a 95? Nin 92 audience? critic, 87 audience. 87 audience. Okay. So here we go. Our first official result. Rotten Tomato search. Cabin in the Woods. Official tomato meter. 92 percent look at oh, you go holy ah geez I'm, I'm i'm almost tempted to give you a bonus point right out of the gate here man god damn well let's not go crazy yeah that's a bit much all right so we'll give you the one it just had the that's, vibe of a 92 i don't know how to explain it that's actually a two-pointer for you right out of the gate that's a 74 on 74 the i know that's honestly shocking like the audience they don't deserve this they don't deserve this movie even back then i mean i do, I do wonder too because you can rate movies on Rotten Tomatoes at any point, right? It doesn't yeah, it's like, yeah. like within a certain window. So I suppose that could actually have been the effect that I was talking about a little earlier where like as the, or as the movie has become less groundbreaking, maybe people see it mm. like a decade later and they're like, ah, oh, come on. That's right. Not, it's like that thing not where that special. when I finally saw The Godfather, I was like, I don't get it. It's just a mafia <laughs> movie. I didn't realize that that's because I saw The Simpsons <laughs> reference the stuff from The Godfather like 40 times. You, you, you they were already ahead of, the, uh, ahead of the curve there. I've got some really nice uh, elevator music playing in the background here, too, man. I'm all about the production value. I am not. <laughs> I just have a <laughs> light mode Wikipedia of a static screen. It's flash banging the entire audience, yeah. All right. Uh, so that's Cabin in the Woods. So you're up. Okay. I'm scratching my brain. Yeah. See, the problem for me is I've been watching movies on the peloton but i've been like looking them up as i watch them so i'm i wouldn't dare pull something like you know the last duel by ridley scott from 2021 because i that's fair yeah let me think about something from you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna say what about crank high voltage the Ooh, two the fun. 2009 uh, sequel to crank that's a statham joint isn't it it is jason statham uh, mm -hmm. Amy Smart, Bai Ling, and uh, Dwight Yoakam. That's right. Now, this if you've never seen in, in Crank One, Jason Statham is poisoned by the mob, and right. the only way he can stay alive is to keep his heart rate high uh, so that his adrenaline counteracts the poison. In Crank Two, um, he needs to administer an electric shock to his body to keep his heart pumping. Yes, that that actually that's what I thought the first crank was. It's weird to me to hear you explain the plot to crank and it not be the plot to crank, too, because that was the entire version of that that I had in my mind. Well, what's crazy is that it's they do take place all in essentially the same day. So, like, at the end of <laughs> Crank Holy 1, shit. he, like, falls out of an airplane, and then it starts from right there in Crank 2. Oh, my God. That's a, that's a busy 24 hours, dude. This is... I, I think I would like this, actually. I think I would like this movie if I sat down and watched it judgment-free. I'm going to tell you, if, if Crank and Crank High Voltage have one uh, fan, it is me. And if they have no fans, then I am dead. I, <laughs> I think that, that these are very, very good action comedies. As long, yeah. I think some people look at them and they go, that's ridiculous. And yeah. it's ridiculous, but almost every action movie is in a way ridiculous. Absolutely. That was really, Jason on. Statham is ridiculous, man. He's like a cartoon character. I mean, if you, wait till he hooks his tongue up to the car battery and then has Bai Ling rev the engine. And then tell me he's not a cartoon character. 
I want to have it written into my Twitch contract that I can't ever lose a competition. Just like his, I can't ever lose in a fight in a movie oh, contract. I forgot about that. Like, I don't want to lose this to you today. But I know I'm going to, but... Well, I don't know. I, I don't remember what Crank 2 is, how his reception was. Well, here, I'll, <laughs> I'll start us off with the guessing since you oh. got us going last okay, time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say this is firmly mediocre. I want to put it in, like, the 60 to 70 range. Let's say if Crank launched at, like, a 73... This is probably like a 67 for the critics, something like that. I'll even write it in on my official pad here. This would be a 67 for critics. Audience probably likes it a little more, but not much. I'm going to go with a 71 audience score. Okay. I So you're going 67, 71? Yeah, yeah. I think that this was a good choice because I feel like exactly the opposite in both ways. Really? I feel like this, I agree with the sense that I think it's going to be mediocre from the critics. I think it's going to be, I'm going to say 57. Okay. But then I actually think, and this might be the, the most insane part, I think that the audience is going to take themselves too seriously and dislike it even more. Mm. I, I have a hypothesis. My, my basic heuristic for looking at movie reviews, the better a movie is, the greater the gulf between the critics and the audience scores. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I if a movie that. is amazing, 98 critics, 62% audience. If a movie There's is horrible, 12% critics, 82% audience. Like completely absent the quality of the movie itself. It's the simple matter of there being like a consensus on something either being great or terrible is going to draw in contrarians who just want to be like, I don't know, I don't think so. Exactly. So I think that this movie is good. Ergo, the audience rating will be lower than the critic score. So 57 critics, and I'm going to say 45 audience. Although I gotta, I'm going to say 48 because I can't imagine any audience members that came into Crank 2 wouldn't be familiar with the ridiculousness from Crank 1. So I'm going to say 57-48. All right. You want to give us the uh, big reveal since this is your movie? That's a good point. I yeah. should do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to be happy with the audience score. I'll just say that. No way. Crank High Voltage from 2009. Ooh, okay, it has a 63 on the tomatometer. So I think that, yeah, I, I think I beat you by two Holy. on the critic score. So that was, that was a close one. And then it has a 49 from the audience. That's God a split damn. right there. God damn. You, you have very nearly gotten exact guesses on back-to-back -back movies here. And now I'm on Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm like, bro, you're telling me ISS has a 92%? I honestly Eesh. thought that that was a January science fiction movie. I thought we were looking in the 30s for that. People are hungry, apparently, dude. Good Lord. All right. Uh, looks like I'm up. Okay, let's go, let's go a little more recent. Okay, a little more a little cerebral. More yeah, exactly. Uh, let's try out Asteroid City. Okay. In the Wes Anderson joint. Now, I can tell you I have not seen Asteroid City. Okay. But I can tell you that my parents saw it in theaters and said that it was missable, which to me means that I, I honestly think I'm going to start with the audience score. And I'm going to say that the audience score is going to be surprisingly low. I'm going to say for a Wes Anderson movie, higher than Crank, high voltage, though. I'm going to yeah. say 64% on the audience score. Okay, okay. But I know that this is indeed... I bet the letterbox score is, is a lot higher because I feel like this has now become uh, a, a more respected, almost like cult classic in the Wes Anderson oeuvre. Yeah. Now, I would say, critically speaking, I'm going to put it at a 73. So I'm going to go 73 and 64. Okay. 64, 73 for a critic audience, respectively, right? 64, 70, uh, 73 critics, 64 audience. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ooh, that is very close to the range I wanted to go. I, I, I think I might go a little higher with critics. I, I, I just can't help but feel like critics want to like Wes Anderson movies. 
just mm-hmm. regardless of what they even are. And this is like as as missable. I I agree. This one's missable. I w- I wouldn't go out of your way to watch this one, but if you like Wes Anderson, th- this is extremely Wes Anderson. Like it, it checks Look every at the poster. I God, yeah. I mean, watch the trailer for God's sake. It's, it's just quintessential Wes Anderson, complete with the ensemble cast. Uh, so I think for that reason, I might go a little higher. I might go into like the high seventies, maybe like a seventy nine mm, for okay, critics or okay. something like that. Seems right to me. But I do think you're right about the audience. I don't think this one really stuck with them. So I'm gonna go with like a fifty nine audience score on this one too. So seventy nine, fifty nine. Yeah, yeah. Versus a. Seventy-three, sixty-four. Yeah, you're gonna have to help me out with. I'm trying to remember yours. my own as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's mostly why I'm writing mine down is so I don't forget. That's my a own good idea. I I do own a pen. All right, looking up Asteroid City on RottenTomatoes.com. This is gonna be a seventy-five from critics on the mm-hmm. tomato. Okay. Putting us uh, that that one goes to you as well, I think, right? Because that is you were I was at on seventy three. Yeah, yeah. God, man, we're close on them though. Uh, audience score, I think, is going to go to me though. It's going to be at a sixty two. Sixty two. Yeah, pretty low. I don't know. I said. Wait, say? I think I said sixty four. God, damn. <laughs> you're right. Mm. Oh, that, 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 well, that hurts. I'm keeping myself honest with this. You are. No, I appreciate that. That's, that's a two-pointer for you for sure. But sheesh, that's as close as it can be. Chat verified. Yep. All right. There it is. <clears throat> yeah, damn. Right, shout to out the... to my mom and my dad for telling me that they thought this one was mediocre. Yeah, yeah. Big swing. All right. Yep, off to a strong start. You're up. Okay. Let me think about this. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to take something. Let, let's throw you a curveball. How about Batman Returns? And this Ooh, one, I, I wouldn't even know where to start, to be quite no, honest with you. Okay, so you're, honestly, you're even going to have to help me out as far as like who's playing Batman in this This one. is a Michael Keaton Batman this is Keaton. movie. Okay, this is okay. the second Michael Keaton Batman movie. This is a Tim Burton, if it I'm is, not mistaken? It is Tim Burton. So it's it's the one with Directed Michelle Pfeiffer yep, yep. and um, starring the penguin Danny DeVito. Yep, and Danny Michelle DeVito. Pfeiffer, I believe Danny DeVito playing the role of the penguin. It scarred me as a child. It um, my mom took me to see this you in theaters, there? which is crazy because I must have been. Oh, I think I lost him. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, I hit this delete, so line. I probably muted myself. Burton Hang on, delete, no delete is my mute key, so I muted myself. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was saying this movie scarred me because my mom took me to see it in theaters and yeah. uh, Danny DeVito as the penguin bites somebody's nose off. And now I remember I'm, that. I now I'm looking this at this. I remember that. I'm like, this shit came out in 1992. I was three yeah. and a half years old. What was my mom doing taking me to see Batman Returns <laughs> in the movie theater? That's crazy, bro. Dude, Danny, Danny DeVito as the penguin in this movie is, like, scary. He's like, scary, he, yeah. He did a, a great job on that makeup. Like, he is, he's got an intimidating presence. What was she thinking, I man? do like Michael Keaton's <laughs> Batman a lot, and I think that that is, like, a common opinion. I, th- I think there's yeah. a lot of love for the Michael Keaton Batman. I, I think this might be that. pretty high, man. I don't know. This is... I don't know about the critical reception. I have no idea, honestly, about the critical reception. Let's call it, I'm going to give this one an 81. Okay, 81 critics. From the critics. Let's go 86. From the audience. Audience score. I think, okay. I think this is a very well-liked movie. So you're going 80, I got it written down. 81, 86. There you go. I have no idea where to place this one. The first thing I'm going to say is I think that if I had to bet, I would say your audience score is, is real close. Yeah. Because I think that this is a, a well-liked Batman movie and has become more well-liked over time. Question. Does mm. Rotten Tomatoes... I know we just talked about how there's, a, there's no like, threshold on when people can submit audience scores. Is yeah. the same true of critics' reviews? Yeah. Yeah. If, if someone so reviews review Batman, Returns, Batman Returns today, yeah, yeah, 30 okay. years later. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really interesting. That probably has a... Or like, that's worth considering, too. I think that um if any like listen 
I'm not going to price prices right. That's disrespectful. Like, oh, I think yeah. it's going to be lower than 86. I'm not going to throw you an 85. I'm going to throw yeah. you, uh, for, for the audience score, I'm going to give you a 75. I'm going to, I'm going to cut it right oh. there. Okay. Okay. And then for the critics, a lot of people forget because we were blessed with, so we basically superhero movies got so good relative to what they used to be that people no longer respect them at all which is oh, fair. Yeah. They, got, they got sick of like seven and eight out of tens. Back yeah. in the day, this was all we had. It was Batman yeah. Returns, then a decade of garbage, and then Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Exactly. I was going to say exactly that. There's yes. 10 years of like, you can't make a good superhero <laughs> movie. I think, though, that that means that I'm remembering it more fondly, maybe, than it was respected at the time. I'm going to say it was less critically respected than the first Batman at release, at least. Maybe that's not yeah. relevant in 2023. I'm going to put it at a 72 critic, 75 audience. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's your reveal. It is my reveal. Sorry, I also forgot about X-Men 1. That's true. That, oh, yeah, that changed the game. I think that was uh, right on the turn of the century. Okay. It, it, Bear Taffy, I am pleased to inform you. Mm -hmm. Your critic score was bang on. 81% for the critics. Mm, mm. That and feels good. I've, I've needed that. The audience score of 73 means that I will take the audience score. Yeah, it also right. means that people are haters. I, You know, if, if a movie is good, and, well, Rotten Tomatoes is like a weird, it's a consensus model, right? If a movie yeah. is likable, I don't think a critic has a hard time being like, I like this movie, here's a three out of five. But if, I think that the audience is full of people who want to be haters. I don't know. What, what do you think is the highest audience score on the website? Right. Fucking like Monty Python on the Holy Grail. <laughs> 11 <laughs> out of 10. Uh, or uh, Dragon Slayer Doppelganger. Of course. That actually got removed from IMDb. Oh, we, no. We were accused of gaming the system. Yeah, well, they were, to be Which fair. Which they were. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I, I got the one critic snailed at least there. That feels pretty good. Right, for that me. was perfect. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Let's go with. Uh, are we gonna we're gonna throw it back to one of my all time favorites here with uh, UHF? Oh, okay. Please tell me you've seen UHF. I have seen UHF. Okay. It was a long, long time ago. It's probably oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. two thousand and nine. Mm -hmm. Um. UHF. So I, I use this in Cine Love 2 Nerdle movie. all the time, so I know it has Michael Richards in it. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Um, I remember this. Let me, let me get my ledger prepared here. Being somewhat funny, but not a movie I would expect to do well with the critics. Absolutely not. I think they would find it a little uh, scattershot and... It's, it's satire would be too on the nose for the coastal academics who make up the uh, movie reviewers at your average publication, especially in 1989. I'm going to say audience-wise, I can't imagine anyone seeing Weird Al starring in a movie, choosing to watch it, and then being like, that sucked. Yeah, So absolutely. I'm going to put it on the higher side. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 79 audience. Yeah. And then for the critics, I'm going to... Put out a hit. I'm. I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna say twenty twenty eight. Oh boy! Wow. Okay. That's uh. That's leaving a wide open window for me. Although I don't mm -hmm. know if you're wrong. But man, I want to go bat. I want to go to bat for this movie because it's. It's like I have a special place in my heart for it. I've watched this probably like a dozen times. Like I, I can throw this on at any moment and watch the whole thing and have a great time. And I also think it's hilarious. Like, even for a movie that came out in 1989, I still think it's, like, very funny. There's still a few jokes in this that are still that can still make me laugh. It's got a good cast. It's well-acted. Kevin McCarthy, legendary Speaker of the house. villain performance. He's, 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 this is a good crew here, man. I don't know. I, 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 I wish this had a better score than I assume it has because I also can't help but feel like the critic score is probably, like, 40 45 i'll call it i'll give it a 43 just to give it a little bit of a boost because i do think it's around that zone and then i was gonna go with a high audience score too although after just a few 
movies here in Guess the Rotten Tomato score, I'm beginning to think that the threshold for like a high audience score is a little lower than I initially suspected. Like, I don't think anything's in the 90s, dude. Do you? Like, I feel like no, that might be like a near impossibility. Yeah, I'm realizing. Because, yeah. you know what it is? I think the average hater, if they saw something at 100, they'd be like, well, I liked it, but I could also be the guy who took it to 99. Yeah, exactly. So remind me what your audience score was. My audience score was 79. 79. <sighs> Do I dare? I, 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 I don't think so. I think I got I to gotta go lower on this one, despite the fact that I want so badly for it to be higher. Let's go with a 70 even. 70 even from audience the audience. Score. Okay. All right. And from the critics? Uh, critics was 43. 43. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Google or sorry, uh, Rotten Tomatoes for 1989's UHF. I believe it won Best Picture that year. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure Best Screenwriting. Uh, 61. Wow! From the critics, a Apologies, surprisingly high score. Al. I was not okay. familiar with your game. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. All right, so I think I'll take the point for the critics score, but I believe you very nearly nailed it again. Audience score 77. Oh, <laughs> so close. But yeah, that'll be a point. For I know that I know the people. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. I don't agree with them for the record, but I know. Them. Right. Yep. I mean, that again, that is with the uh, with what we've seen so far. That does seem to be uh, on the higher end for audience score at the very least. There's a much higher critic score than I expected. All okay, I remember uh, from UHF is the uh, the Rambo two parody yeah, where the yeah. dude unloads the full clip in him and he doesn't die but then weird al shoots him with the bow and he explodes yep classic scene uh i think you're up okay let me think of something from back in the day you know what how about the mask oh love it from 1994 probably or Great 1993 idea. yeah around that time that was the uh, the jim carrey golden years Oh, did and he? I, uh, was the, he was on the ascent. I think it was the, honestly like a full decade there between what was it? It was about I think Ace Ventura was the first big one for him, right? And that was like ninety two or something like that. And then all the way through friggin' Bruce Almighty. Yeah, that's I was. I'm so Just, happy I'm talking to another man of taste here because I think a lot of people would have said <laughs> up until Yes Man, and I would say, excuse me, mm. yeah, I'm not gonna insult Yes Man necessarily, but we we Certainly. I personally draw the line at Bruce Almighty, his last. Mm -hmm. Good Jim Carrey style comedy. That, that, there's a line drawn firmly there in my mind, absolutely, as far as the quality mark between Yes Man and Bruce Almighty, no doubt. Fun with Dick and Jane has some. It has some moments, and yeah. uh, Yes Man occasionally can make you chuckle. But I think that that Bruce Almighty was the the beginning of the end. Oh yeah. Okay. Was Liar Liar before? Oh like, yes, Ace Ventura was before Liar Liar, wasn't it? Was that yeah, Ace Ventura was like seven years before Liar Liar? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. The uh, mask. All right. So I think I'm up first here uh, for the mask. Boy, what would be the critical reset? Let me let me Wikipedia this. So just I gotta tell you, bit. if you were on the streets of the playground in 1994, like yeah. Bear and I were, this was The Godfather Part Two. This this is all you were talking about. Smoking, somebody stop me. Do you feel mm -hmm. lucky, punk? That's a spicy mm -hmm. meatball. Uh, Cameron Diaz in the red dress. That I didn't mean, hit me hello. until a little later, but yes, abs without mm -hmm. a doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go pretty high here. I think that I think this was well liked. Again, it was in the golden era of Jim Carrey. I think I think people were in the mood for this. I think. I'm going to go with like a 70, high 70, 77. 77 for the critical reception. 77 for the mask. Audiences, I think, like it quite a bit as well. Let's go 83. 77 critics, 83 audience for the mask. That's tough. That's tough. I feel like you, you took it out of my brain. This and is the advantage of going first. It's true, yeah. You kind of anchor on what the first person says. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would not have said 28 for UHF <laughs> if right. I got second, I think. <laughs> I would have been like, that's at least a, a 55. Yeah. Um, yeah that, was, that was a bold choice. I appreciated it, though. I feel like the mask... I feel like it, it was 
liked at release. Mm. I saw this in, well, there's a story here. I saw this in the drive-in movie theater, mm. but it, it, this is weird because apparently I was old enough to see Batman Returns. But for The Mask, my parents were like, it was the second movie out of two. The first one was Monkey Trouble. The second one was The Mask. They said, just go in the back seat and close your eyes if it gets too scary. So I mm. kept my eyes closed the whole time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw it on VHS like a year later, and I was like, that's funny. But when the mask <laughs> takes over, I was still pretty scared. It's freaky, dude, yeah. When he tries to Don't pull it off mind. his face, but the, the mask is sticking to his face. Oh, man. Dude, you got me Googling monkey trouble, too. I had, I had completely removed this from my mind. Yeah, and then I, I, we have, like, forced moves with monkey trouble. Because I'm always like, yeah, it's Anna Paquin, and she like a monkey escapes from a cosmetics factory or something. And then they're like, it's not Anna Paquin, it's Dora Birch. Like, I've, I've done this... True. I've told this story like 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> um, monkey right, in a uh, hotel? No, you fool. That's Dunstan checks in and it's a chimpanzee. It's completely different primate based medias, okay? You have the gall to call Dunstan checks in monkey at a hotel. Come Next, on. you're going to. Dignified film. You're going to tell me that monkey trouble is the one where the dude plays hockey. Uh, that's MVP, most valuable primate. <laughs> okay, I I think I'm I'm stalling. Yeah, I think the critics are going to. I mean, we're, I'm basically going higher or lower. I'm realizing now when you go second, that's your advantage. Is you go higher or lower. Yeah, I'm this gonna one, go I, crazy. This is a tough one though. I'm taking higher on the mask. On the critics. On the critics. I'm gonna take wow. an 81 on the critics. Wow! Wow! And then I'm, I'm almost going to flip you. I'm going to take an 81 on the critics. So I'm going to take a 77 on the audience. I think there's some people out there who still just resent Jim Carrey. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, I think this is your reveal too. My gut wants me to take a 60s from the critics, but I think especially as time has gone on, people our age that became movie critics, they're not giving a rotten tomato to The Mask. Right. The Mask, 1994. I can't... Find it. Is, did we imagine this movie? The Purge? I think if you search The Mask Jim Carrey, it'll pull it up. The Mask Jim Carrey. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God damn it, dude. <laughs> I'm all right. I, I, I'm spoiling re your reveal, I know, but I searched it too. <laughs> I'm so glad. Critic score 80%. <laughs> ah. You had 77, I had 81. You beat me by two again. <laughs> Audience score, 68. I got 77. You got 83. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's two more for two more for NL, son of a bitch. I feel like we're learning. I'm, I've been beating this drum that the critics are smart and the audience is stupid for yeah. probably 10 years. Every time I bring it up, people accuse me of being out of touch. Yeah? Really? The, the critics... Love the mask, and the audience thinks is mid. Where do you fall on the side of that? It's not my fault that people who can ex uh, appreciate true beauty end up working at the Chicago Tribune, okay? <laughs> oh, man. All right, where are we going from here? I guess, I guess I'm up next. I mean, I, so let me, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Then you want, you want something a little more standard? You want to go with a wild card? Oh, yeah. a wild card. Absolutely. You got to get a wild card in, right? All right. So let me get, let me hit you with uh, Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen The Good Dinosaur. You have. That's I have. That's shocking to me. Um, it is the beginning of Pixar having a mid-off. Yes. It is. It's precisely why I chose it, because I thought that it would be very difficult for us to like pin down exactly how mid it is. Now, I will say that the director of The Good Dinosaur, they gave him a second shot this year with Elemental. Oh, really? And Elemental is not as good as the best Pixar stuff, but it runs laps around The Good Dinosaur. Like, yeah. it has a real emotional core to it. Mm -hmm. it's, I wouldn't mm -hmm. describe it as a masterpiece, but it's pretty good. Yeah. The the only real frame of reference I have for the good dinosaur is a what appears to me to be universal consensus that this is the point at which Pixar began to fall off. It right? we couldn't because believe like, that they could make something that wasn't at least an eight out of ten. 
but that's it's it's insane that they maintained that like at, like not even really uh subjectively like uh, again an almost universal acclaim to just like some of the best animated films of the last 15 years it's well, all Pixar. yeah they they put out like you got to remember from 2003 through right, like the like good a, dinosaur 25 years for god's sake yeah it, they they went like monsters inc finding nemo Mm -hmm. Ratatouille, mm -hmm. Up, Wally, like they were just—they were knocking them out of, out of the 10 park. Films. These are ten out of ten. Like every single one. Is and it's true. Insane. People, I will say, people forgave Cars because the audience is bringing up Cars. That's true. But I think people were like, they—they they gave them a commercial one. They said, you know what? They're just making Cars to sell toys. They got to do that in order to finance, you know, yeah, Wally yeah. Two or the whatever. Good dinosaur. So the good dinosaur was really where it's almost like rather than this is not a cynical movie like they meant to tell a story and they just messed it up. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that, <laughs> There's no Lightning McQueen in this, okay? The, nobody's going as the good dinosaur for Halloween. What is it to you that like is is it really just like a matter of it being underwhelming or boring or do you find yourself as you're watching the good dinosaur just like having a certain level of expectation that they didn't meet or what was it about the movie that was like off putting if anything? I guess I don't. I don't. It's been probably been eight long. years since I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. But um, what I recall is just watching it and being like, "This feels like a DreamWorks movie." Like it. Oh, it feels yeah. like instead of it being like a timeless, like Hans Christian Andersen fable, yeah. uh, it it feels like at any point the good dinosaur could start dancing the Gangnam style. Okay. <laughs> That's. That's a weirdly uh, effective way of conveying the idea of a DreamWorks movie. <laughs> well, right. I think... Uh, so yeah, you're up. I think critically, this... I have a hard time believing that it would be below a 55. I, I was going to say 55. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I think... Um, this one's going to be a little out of pocket for me. I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to give it a... 58 from the critics. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, not, it's mostly just a disappointing movie. It's not like it's yeah, yeah. horrible. And I'm going to say this is the rare one where the audience um, prefers it because a lot of people are going to be watching this with their kids and they're going to be like, ah, it kept them busy for 90 minutes or like three hours or however long yeah. the movies are these days. Right. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna say uh, uh, critics 58, audience I'm going to put it up, not much higher, but I'm going to put it up at 65. Okay. I like that. I'm going to take your guesses and add 10 to each of them. Oh, so you're going 68, 75. 68, 75. Yeah, that seems about right to me. So we'll go with 68 All critics, right. 75 audience. I'll even bump that up to a 77 audience. 77. Okay, let me erase that. 77. Yeah. Because so I think despite it being possibly one of Pixar's worst films. I still think that, like you said, like there's plenty of people out there who would be very happy to throw on the good dinosaur for their kids for an afternoon. It's likable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, especially if you're like 10. All right. That's my reveal. Let me look it up. The good dinosaur starring Jeffrey Wright. What? Yeah. He plays the, father of the good dinosaur maybe i don't know did <laughs> <laughs> so dude what a wasted cast look at this okay oh, sam yeah. elliott anna paquin jeffrey wright and francis mcdormand what are we doing Holy here cow. having them do the voice actors for a dinosaur family that gets washed away by a flood like 30 uh, minutes into it that just makes me think of uh oh my goodness i'm not gonna be able to remember the actor's name the uh the the steve the pirate from dodgeball uh, oh, Alan Tudyk. Tudyk. Alan yeah, Tudyk, yeah that, that always makes me think of how they had him voice the chicken in Moana. And just, <laughs> okay, the behind-the-scenes footage of that is so fucking good. Uh, man, I really wish I'd inverted my scores here, although I think I might have still gotten both. We oh. got a 75 from critics. Washed. Surprisingly critics high. are There's washed. Certified fresh. Now, that's a, the, good I, the red tomato I can see, but a gold seal behind it. I, don't, uh, I can't stand for that. That's something there. Certified Audience fresh score. used to mean something. Right. <laughs> it used to be the blue check mark of Rotten Tomatoes. 
Uh, 64 audience score. So yours, I think, was a, I think if I had not made my final adjustment to my audience score, I think I might have snuck in on that point. Well, I, I say 65 for my audience score. So I'm, oh, man. All I'm right. I, oh, that's right. Because I added your 10. And then, okay. Yeah, yeah. You still got it. Still got it. I mean, I, I, I guess I got to take the splits where I can get them. But geez, I, you're starting to Holy. run away with this already. Current score, Bear, four points. Northern Lion with 10. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're, you're kind of running away, away with this already. You want to you throw me a bone here, maybe? You want to give me something okay. you think might stick with my mind? I'm trying to... Th you know what? Let's go with a landmark of Utah-adjacent cinema. How about... Oh, I think I know what it's going to be. How about Napoleon Dynamite? I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a feeling. That's a good one. Because I think it might take place in Idaho... It's one of the two, yeah. I, I feel like there's just sort of like an implied setting of like rural Mormon. There's like a Utahness to it, yeah. Yeah, it is Idaho. Okay, apparently it is mm. Idaho. Oh boy. So this, it, I mean, obviously with my growing up in a Mormon community, uh, I feel like th th it was a an atomic bomb of cultural impact, like. <laughs> Was it controversial? Was there like not in any way? No, oh, everybody people loved, loved it. it. Okay, people loved Napoleon Dynamite around my. I mean, like everybody loved it, obviously, but like, like specifically in my high school, it was the it was all anything anyone ever cared about. There were at least five distinct <laughs> renditions of the uh, dance scene performed at okay, either, yeah. uh assemblies or talent shows that I can recall through the course of my high school experience after that film came out. Yeah, like... We just quoted it. We didn't have that level of dedication. I can't believe how much people like to do it to the point where like it's probably infecting my perception of the critical, uh, critical response. I want to say this is up there and like maybe... Was, I'm going to start with audience score here and I think it's going to mm, be... Okay bonkers high i'm gonna go give this our highest yet i'm gonna say like an 87 okay 87 for the audience for the score audience here for napoleon dynamite for napoleon dynamite for the critical reception let's see let's keep it in that range i mean my gut's telling me 81 okay the critical response and I, I i do feel like i could be dead wrong about this which would be unfortunate for the bone that you threw me but i, I feel pretty good about it was it polarizing? People are saying. I didn't realize there was a, I, an element of controversy to it. I don't know if it was polarizing. I think it's, it's hard to look back and remember that this is actually like sort of a weird movie to watch. Yeah. Like when it has a much different tone than like your average Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson comedy from the Absolutely. same era. So I, I do think that there were... A, a decent chunk of the population that that didn't really vibe with it, yeah. but I still think that you're, I think you're you're close. I do think that the critic. This is an independent movie. We probably never right. would have heard about it were it not for the critics championing it when it, yep. you know, played in six theaters in New York and Los Angeles. I am going to go a little uh, lower on critics, though. I'm going to I'm going to give it a seventy. I'm going to go seventy five. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give us that, that six Still in the ball point park, window. Yeah. And then I do think you're, you know what? You think it's that high up for the audience score? I, I thought I was no. maybe shooting for the moon I, a little now bit. Now that I think about it, I actually think that with a movie like this, it's a little dry. I think, I think we as millennials get it, but maybe it doesn't quite hit the same way for, well, I don't know. My parents were, were in the Napoleon Dynamite. They weren't yeah. quoting it the way we were, but they were like, it's really funny. I do think, yeah, like uh, someone in my chat just said, I think it's not as funny or popular to kids these days. Like, I don't think it's Zoomer humor at all. There's not a single skibbity toilet. <laughs> Closest thing is the time machine he buys off of eBay. Yeah, even that, though. Uh, so so why are you going for audience score, then? Audience score, I will take a... I'm going to go a little lower. I'm going to disrespect it. I'm going to give it a 68 on the audience score. Wow, but it's really... I think disparity. it deserves higher than that, but I think the audience might disrespect it. Yeah. Yeah, in hindsight, I think uh, maybe a little wishful thinking in my I score. Mean, I'll no be happy if it is reflected well, though. Okay, Napoleon uh, Dynamite. It's, it's all you, yep. 2004. It has a mm -hmm. 72 on the oh. tomato meter. Mm. Come on, audience. You Come say, on, audience. You said 81. I said 75. I'll take the 75. 
Yep. And then it has a 74 from the audience. Oh, is that still you, though? It is still me, even though I, I disrespected it. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't sound so uh, disappointed. Come on. I'm doing well, my... I mean, this is a good movie. Yeah, 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 it's true. It's just... Uh, falling so far behind. All right, next round's double points. Yeah, yeah. That's how they... Yeah. You ever wonder why they do that on the Family Feud? Or even on, like, Double Jeopardy? Is like, it kind of renders the entire first round meaningless. Nobody on Family Feud, unless you win the first three rounds with a perfect score, which they, sometimes they don't even add up to 100. Yeah. They, they're always like points are doubled in the last round or the, or the points are tripled in the final round. What's the point, man? Well, I mean, like Final Jeopardy almost renders the entire game Hang on, mood. brother, because there's some gamesmanship in Final Jeopardy. There's... But it's in one moment. It is it true. It all comes down to that. There's, there's an element of gamesmanship. Well, it dep- I mean, you got to do a little bit of math. And then what, okay, so is, if it's you against somebody else and you're both close, are yep. you going to bet low in the expecting that you're going to get it wrong and your opponent will overbet? Or are you going to bet high and put your nuts on the table, see if you get it right? And how does that change if you have a tripolar situation where all three people on Jeopardy, all three contestants are within striking distance if you were to double but their score. more often than not, they just wager the exact amount that's going to keep them in the lead. And it's just kind of boring. Well, if you have a runaway, but not every game is a runaway, just like 90%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am up. I'm mean, Honestly, I, I want to bring this up just because I'm curious to see if you have seen it. Uh, a movie called Homeward Bound. Oh, The Incredible Journey. Yeah, I did. Although see I don't it. know if the first one had mm. such a subtitle. Is this uh, this is the 1993 movie? The original release, yeah. Homeward Holy Bound, cow! 1993, yeah. Posters that go hard, bro. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta throw that one up on the stream. That is that that is. I mean, that's kind of accurate, actually. I was gonna say I don't know if that's ins- entirely representative of what the movie is, but. It, it it do be getting intense. That cat is like, get me out of here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Wait, I mean so would I. <laughs> <laughs> it is on a log traveling down the rapids. So They're going wild with it, man. So uh, I, yeah, I so have seen this. Um, that's good. I, you ever had this Michael happen? J. Fox? What the fuck? I just he must that. have been the golden retriever. Yeah, I think so. I, you ever, as a kid... Um, like be too young to appreciate the original and then you watch the sequel for like on VHS a thousand times and then you get older and you're talking to people and then you say something like it's crazy how Ghostbusters 2 is like so much better than the first one and then they mm-hmm. all look at you like you got a railroad spike through your head <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened to me with this movie like I think I've yeah. seen Homeward Bound once but I've seen the sequel where they're lost in San Francisco like a thousand times mm-hmm I mean, it's it's the the foundation is is certainly like the, the Homeward Bound, uh, Lost in San Francisco, ran where Homeward Bound walked. I bet if you, you know were I mean? to look it up, I bet Homeward Bound Two, Lost in San Francisco, fucking sucks ass. Probably, yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I was like, this is incredible. They got lost again. I honestly wonder how well Homeward Bound uh, stands up to the test of time because I remember thinking that this movie was epic. Like, Dude, it is crazy. It, it was a hell of a journey and an incredible journey, if you will. The fact that Michael J. Fox plays the Golden Retriever is giving me a little bit of a boost here, too. I think this was probably p- pretty well received back in the day. Dude, I honestly, I'm in the dark here. I'm going to say... It's hard for me to believe that something so steeped in nostalgia couldn't have a high a high audience score. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that at 72. Okay. Not out insanely high. But then critics wise, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb, and this might be a little crazy. I'm gonna give it like a like a 38. Whoa. I think critics are a little too self serious to give great reviews en masse to a movie that has dubbed uh, voices talking over animals. I think talking Mm. animals that are not animated is like poison for critics. But this was in 1993. This might be like one of the first times we ever saw this. 
Well, you might be also, right. Also, apparently it's know. the pit bull that's uh, voiced by Michael J. Fox. Oh, okay. Which, which yeah, makes way more sense <laughs> now that I think about it. Does it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Chance. And he had kind of like a, mm. a happy-go-lucky, like, uh, younger vibe to him, which is definitely what I can uh, hear. In, well, in that, you know what? In that case, knowing that, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my 38 to a, a 37. Wow. <laughs> No respect. 37 for, J. for the critics. I mean, I definitely feel like I got to go higher on the critics there, man. Let's go with like a 52, I suppose. Somewhere along those lines. I mean, I, I feel like it's higher, honestly, but I, I, I got to play it a little I safe as far as trying to get this point ship. going. Yeah, there you go. I'm starting to learn. Uh, audience score, remind me what you went with. I went with 72. 72. Hmm. I think you're pretty close there. I think it's... Let's go. I'm going to go 72. Seven, Ah, man, uh, seventy-four. I don't. I know that's 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 not very fun, but now, I, th I think you're pretty damn close here. Can I tell you something? I'm having. I'm. I'm locking in my guesses, but I do believe that on Sunday I googled like best movies to watch on Disney Plus because yeah. that's what I use on the bike. I feel like Homeward Bound might actually have a hundred. <laughs> it might be like. <laughs> It was like all the animated movies from like 1935 to 1965, and then I was yeah. like, "Really, Homeward Bound?" But maybe that was a, maybe that was an apparition. You you came so very close yet again with a 71 for the audience score. Oh, almost baby, dead on once more. So that'll be another point for you. Uh, you'll be surprised to learn, critics consider Homeward Bound. A, a a masterpiece of cinema. cinema. Oh my god! Eighty-seven percent. Holy on the cow. tomato meter, the highest I believe we've seen so far. <sighs> Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey. And you said it would get a fifty-two. I did. Yeah, I'm an idiot. That's an insult. Anybody guessing less than that? I don't got a brain in their skull. Now, can you just for peace of mind, can yeah. you look up Homeward Bound Two: Lost in San Francisco? Absolutely. Uh, give me a guess, real quick. Thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fifty-six. Yeah. The okay. They yeah. they can recapture that magic twice. A lot more importantly, forty-four in the audience score. They they were oh, not. Okay. They were not here for it. That's the one where they went woke. Right. Uh, uh, you're up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, let me think about this. Okay. It's like the don't. Just suggest Jim Carrey movies challenge, and I'm failing. I'm failing nonsense. You know what? How about a lot of Jim Carrey discourse? To be fair, how about uh, Happy Gilmore? Ooh, I like it. I think we can sense a theme here. It's like movies that we know are certified classics of our generation, but may not necessarily have had uh, the audience and critics scores reflecting that opinion. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Oh, boy. Happy uh, I've seen this. I've seen Happy Gilmore. It's a good uh, movie. I, I spoiled like myself a little bit. I just saw that it won an MTV Movie Award for Best Fight. Oh, so well, I've got to go ahead and put the uh, critic score at 100 in that case. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah, this was... Uh, so this, this was the one featuring Bob Barker, if mm -hmm. I recall correctly, in, in one of the better cameos I think I've ever seen in a movie. And... I'm wondering, like, when was this in the in the Adam Sandler arc? Well, this was, well, this was the beginning. This is the very beginning of the Sandler arc, because this is the one that named his production company, right? So he wasn't even really like Adam Sandler yet, was he? What was I, the first big like Adam Sandler movie? So Billy Madison was first. Yeah, and then I think this was kind of like if Billy Madison was um, was his hereditary. This was like his midsummer. It was like his nuts on the table. Let's see if it, if it was a fluke or if he's got the if he's got the secret sauce. A thousand percent, the first time that comparison's ever been made, but does seem uh, reasonable. It makes accurate. sense, right? Yeah, no, it checks out. Oh boy. Okay. Well, you know what? I f I feel like this could have been. Let's. I'm going to start audience here to keep myself in check. I think this is this has got to be like low 70s because i think there's a lot of sandler hate whether or not that's yes. warranted i think there's a lot of sandler hate out there a lot of people just not happy to see a regular looking dude 
succeed so wildly or something yeah, like yeah. that. Let's go with like a 73 from audience the, from score. From the audience, okay, yeah, understandable. Yeah. And critics, I think, is going to be just a touch higher than that. Let's go with like a 76 critics. Okay. Because I think it was, I think it probably was scored fairly well. It's a tough one for me. Yeah. Because I think that in our, well, maybe our generation a little bit, but if you're Gen X, I bet if you asked 10 uncles at a cookout that were between <laughs> we the ages of... 10 uncles at a cookout. <laughs> if you said, if they're all between the ages of 40 and 50, and you said, what's your favorite comedy? I think you would get at least one Happy Gilmore in the average I group. I think that's a fair There'd assessment. There'd be some Happy Gilmores, some Dumb and Dumbers. Mm -hmm. Some dude with uh, really big circular glasses would hit you with like duck soup or some Hal Ashby the stuff from like 1928. But most people would say like maybe Step Brothers, Happy Gilmore, Dumb and Dumber, Blazing Saddles, Tommy Boy, something in there. So when I'm the trying tiny to nation of Fredonia goes bankrupt. It's wealthy. Don't benefactor. don't worry about duck soup, okay? <laughs> People will try to tell you it's worth your time. It's not worth your time. <laughs> a guy is, is dead. 91 years old. What the fuck? It is it is old and not very good. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. It might be the best comedy ever made. Um, I don't like it though. Ask Rotten Tomatoes. It's guys. I bet it's a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Happy Gilmore audience score. Yeah. I am. I agree with you. I think there's a lot of Sandler haters. Yeah. I think as time has gone on, the Sandler haters have assented to the knowledge that he still has one to two heaters in his comedy collection, and this well, is doubtlessly one of them. They saw Uncut Gems, and then they were like, oh, "That's okay, of course, he's, he's all right." I think even Sandler haters, they could rant about how much they hate Adam Sandler for like 20 minutes. But then if you ask them about Happy Gilmore, they'd be like, all right, that's the exception. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to put it up at a 79. OK. The critics that's audience. Yeah. For yeah. audience. Yeah. yeah. And for critics, I'm going to I'm going to pull it down a bit. You're at a 76. Yep. I'm going to say they got it at I, I think when it came out, they had it at a 41. And then as Ooh. time has gone on, it has elevated itself into fresh territory at a 63 with the benefit of hindsight. That's, that's a lot lower than I thought would, we'd be going here, but okay. So a 63 from the critics and a 79 from the audience. Yep. Now, I will bring up the tab. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Happy Gilmore. God Damn it. You're so fast at looking at these I know. Up. I can't help but get out of here because I got to know. And I get disappointed every time. So it is a 62 on the tomato meter. Yep. Yep. That's low. That's 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 I mean, lower than it should be. You know, they're still working off. It's the long tail right. effect. It's like you of said. The, it's like, yeah, they're, they're trying to recover from a pretty devastating opening. And then a 79. Oh, I had 79. It's an 85 on the audience score. Yeah. So that's yours, too. Oh boy, man, this was, I mean, it, it looked a lot better when it was like five to one, but now 15 to five, that's starting, oh, to, no. seem, <laughs> that's starting to seem insurmountable. <laughs> if I can just get a two for here at some point, man, I don't want to hold you for uh, too long, by the way, if you wanted to do uh, other stuff today. Oh, I'm having a good time. It's up to you. Yeah, really. cool, cool. Uh, I got another one here for you. Okay. Uh, another one of my all-time favorites that I'm very curious, actually, to see the uh, critical reception for is My Cousin Vinny. Okay. Now, this, I have seen it before. It's on my Disney Plus watch list for reappraisal. Nice. My, yeah, this is an uh, all-timer for me. My understanding of My Cousin Vinny is that it's an unassailable classic of, of the 1980s. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that Marissa Tomei was nominated for an Oscar for this. I which, think that's right. Let me double check on that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. This means critically, it she must... She won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. In a comedy, that's rare. 
That's crazy. Because yeah. you know how the uh, the Oscars feel about comedies. They're like best comedy ever made. Something that didn't make me laugh once. Hangover, <laughs> not nominated for anything. Birdman. What best makeup or something? Right. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say critics wise. I honestly think that my cousin Vinny is. I'm gonna give it a, a 95. I'm gonna Ooh. I'm gonna make you make the high low choice on that okay, one. Okay. Okay. And then audience score. I think the audience is is full of haters. I think that. 80% of people who watch a movie these days uh, do it while scrolling through their phone at the same time and then just that's, come up with me, their... That's me, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I will say I have a newfound appreciation for cinema sitting my ass down on the bike and pedaling for two hours to the movie. You, you get so distracted by the movie, you focus on every detail. You see resonance and the building of themes and you have more appreciation for like characterization and stuff like that. Dude, cardio cinema? When I was uh, going hard at the gym, that was that was my bag. That was, Cardio and I cinema. I have the exact same opinion. Yeah, well, they just like, go into a dark room when there's a big projector screen. And you got a bunch of like ellipticals and treadmills and stuff in there. That's a great business idea when interest rates come down. A movie theater with treadmills and exercise bikes. Yeah. Honestly, okay. I don't know why. You said I mean, yeah, like, but your your heart said well, no. Like, the thing is, is it exists. <laughs> like, no, know. no, those are gyms with TVs. Okay, <laughs> this say. is gonna be a movie theater with bikes <laughs> just, and treadmills. Just changing the name. <laughs> no, it's the ratio of the screen size to the oh, amount of. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, yeah. Fucking, there's an element of gamesmanship. Um, I think I think critically, uh, 95 audience. I'm gonna say. 82. Okay, okay. That gives me some wiggle room. Man, you got this beaten out homeward bound for our top critical reception so far, huh? I know. Who would have thought? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Before this started. Um, boy, yeah. I mean, I, I got to go lower, honestly. It's just like a, a matter of logical thinking based on our previous... I had uh, to make it hurt, though. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Uh, I want to stay high with it, man, but I know I gotta, I gotta take this window here. I'm gonna go with an 82 on the critics. On the critics, audience. Remind me, what you went, you went like six. I went with 82 on that. Oh no, 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 you went 82 audience, right? Okay, that's probably where I got it from. Um, jeez, oh, I do think the audience really liked this one as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go 87. 87, okay. 87 audience. I think this one was. Maybe one of the higher ratings overall. We'll see. I'll be disappointed, honestly, if this isn't one of the highest rated ones that we see today. I have good news. Okay. I am not disappointed. Hey! But the bad news is I think I might have still somehow lost the critics. <laughs> What's the critic score? Uh, oh, no, never mind. Okay, I think I'm good. The critics was at 87. What? Which, damn. They like, put out a hit on My Cousin Vinny. I mean, that, well, you're disappointed? Well, because I said 95. <laughs> oh, true, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's up there, man. That's pretty damn good. My conspiracy theory about Rotten Tomatoes is that if you look at the percentage of movies that are fresh versus rotten, in the year 2000, it was like 50-50. Yeah. And now, in 2023-2024... It's like 80% of movies are fresh. Right. So well, I look at this, and I know how Rotten Tomatoes works, and it's more like, did you like it or not like it? And then they take mm -hmm. the, the aggregate. Yeah. I feel like an, an 87 for My Cousin Vinny is like that's sacrilegious. 13% of, of critics said, nah, bro, give me Homeward Bound instead. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Like I don't disagree. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm very biased about this one, but uh, I mean, of of all the of all the possible bars to set as far as what we've discussed today, this definitely feels like where we should be. At least it's in. it's high. I can't. I guess yeah, I can't no, argue with that. Uh, but but certainly could be higher. Eighty seven for the audience score as well. I Holy guess I nailed that one. So that feels on. good. Let's go the twofer. I'm back in it. Okay. The comeback okay. begins now. Let me think right. about this one. Yeah, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I am curious now. I feel like I'm going to have to search this after the fact, but I, w I do wonder what their actual top highest 
rated movies are. I'm sure you've probably seen that list once or twice. I remember that for like 10 years, it used to be Toy Story 2. That's fair. And then no, one I, dude was I'm like, okay with that. Mm, actually, it's mid. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta meet that guy, dude. Okay, you know what? Let's, go, let's find out what went wrong. He's probably got a YouTube channel with like 8 million subscribers. <laughs> I'm going to take you to Big Trouble in Little China. Wow. Okay, this is uh, this is left. This this is not even left field for me. This is in a different ballpark, dude. Unknown. Big you, Trouble. You, you don't know much about it. Not much at all. I'm I, going I to guess it. that I, you would like it. Extent. Really? Yeah. I think if you like, based on what you've said, that first off, it's right from that era, 1986. Yeah. Right. I think you would Kurt enjoy Russell? it. Kurt Russell, yeah, okay. It's like an action I mean, uh, comedy. Poster alone is definitely working for me. Hmm. I'm going to show this off real quick. Jack Burton's in for some serious trouble, and you're in for some serious fun. Absolutely horrendous tagline. Um, oh, yeah. That one. Well, I mean, <laughs> this is at least Kurt Russell's uh, mullet certainly does a lot of heavy lifting here. And so do his arms. No kidding. This is, well, okay, so I, I'm honestly, like, I'm, I'm operating completely in the dark here. I'm just okay. kind of learning everything about this now. Uh, let's see. Kurt Russell, mid-80s. John Carpenter directed. Oh, okay, okay. So this is probably, I got to imagine this is pretty well received. Hmm. Oh, it's a summer blockbuster too, man. Mid-July mm. release. I think this is this probably one. up there, man. Yeah. You should probably watch this movie. I bet I would like it. Yeah. And I, just all, of all of what I've seen here so far, I'd probably enjoy this. Truck driver Jack Burton wins a bet with his friend Wang Chi to make sure he follows through on payment. He accompanies him to the airport to pick up his Chinese fiance, where a Chinese American street gang, the Lords of Death, try to kidnap another Chinese girl. It's a case of mistaken crazy. identity. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with. I think the critics probably lower than the audience on this one. I'm honestly pretty tempted to go very similar to the last guess that I just made. I'll, I'll change it up a little bit. Let me go with like a go with an even 80. Okay, from, from the, the critics. critics. All right. Yep, yep. That does put me uh let's 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 go like well actually we did just see an exact duplicate score last time, didn't we? Yeah. So I can tell you what, let's go like a 78. 80, 78, okay. Having seen the movie many times, I think these are pretty good guesses, actually. Nice. I was just looking at how many times they say the word Chinese in the first two paragraphs. I, I was of... feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were like, this guy's Chinese. He's marrying well, a Chinese lady. China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they then tracked down the Lords of Death to Chinatown, by the way, where they battled two ancient Chinese warrior societies. This is turning vaguely Trump. <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> China Town, like <laughs> Olivia Munn, Kim Cattrall, Samantha, Samantha from Sex in the City. People, I always thought of myself more as a Miranda, really, the red hair, of course. Um, You're doing the fingers, right? When yes, the hands. Well. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The bad part is I've started to do the hands in real life when I talk as well. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the voice. Oh, people, God. we do do the voice. Can and then people say, is quick? that Trump? And I say, it is people. Many people say that it is. <laughs> uh, I I just give me think one or two Chibli's. I just need to hear Chibli. Chibli. Chibli, the Antifa. Chibli, the <laughs> lieutenant of Antifa. <laughs> the woke mob, mafia, mama Chibli. Um, I Where think you on, I think your your audience score I think is bang on. Nice. Um which is tough for me. I'm going to say, although this is a cult classic, I'm going to say some normies will watch it and be like, I don't get it. It's a little silly. So I'm going to yeah. give us some wiggle room. I'm going to take the audience down to 72. Okay. Um, and you know what? I'm going to... What's that? How are you feeling? I Go want to put it... I want to put it at 72, 72, but I, I'm going to pull it down a little bit. I'm going to take it, to, and not for the meme. This is a, a serious matter. I'm going to yeah. take it to 69 critics, 72 audience. He's playing for the win. I think that the critics didn't appreciate this upon release, and it's only 
with the benefit of hindsight that it's come up. But a lot of people from, you know, if they reviewed this in 1986, they're not going to come back in 2023 and be like, sorry, I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I, I, I've gotten out a little ahead, ahead of you here again, but maybe we should just start doing movies that I don't know. <laughs> so I'm better suited for that. Big Trouble in Little China, 1986. Now, I might have still lost is the thing, but... Big Trouble in Little China has a 74 from the critics. Right. Which, remind, I, I, all the numbers are mixing you, up in my mind. You had the... You're I had at 80, 80, and I'm yeah. at 69, which means oh, I take that by God. one. <laughs> but then the <laughs> audience... So many like that. The audience gave you an 82. So, right. you're at I 78, think, you get that yeah. one. There we go. Okay, I'll take another split. Big respect to the audience. Uh, that's... We're getting there. We're crawling our way back up. This critic's consensus in 1986, I'm sure it said, a big waste of your time. Don't go yeah. see this. Now it says, brimming with energy and packed with humor. Big Trouble in Little China distills kung fu B-movies as affectionately as it subverts them. 1986, they were like, fresh. you're stupid if you go see this. You're <laughs> dumb. Oh, man. I like that one. That was... Uh, that's a fun... I wonder if that's on a streaming service i i doubt it i feel like that whole like arc or not arc era of film is like gone you know what i think it might be on canadian disney plus oh shit where to watch big trouble in little china it's available on disney plus or and well this is Damn. probably canadian yeah disney plus amazon prime video oh it, tell me i can buy it on amazon you could I'll buy watch it on this tonight, dude. You could buy it on Google Play Movies from four ninety nine. <laughs> you could buy it on Apple TV. I can TV. rent it. Let's go. I'm all, like, I know what I'm doing tonight. Do you, have, do you have Prime Video? Yeah, I think you probably. Is it not just on Prime Video? It says available to rent for four bucks. Wow. Which, you have, you know, do you have Disney Plus? There. I do. Yeah, I can check there too. Do you have Paramount that. Plus. Sling, Tubi, Stars. I have Sling, but only for football. <laughs> CISO? Do you have CISO? <laughs> I made I made the, the the foolish choice to subscribe to Sling for the NFL season. I, I was just kind of like giving myself an opportunity to consume the content ethically. Right. Yeah. Boy, was that dumb. <laughs> it's, it's honestly almost worse. <laughs> like, Does it I work? Just, yeah, it works, but oh, it's just okay. like the 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 matter of uh, having to perform basically the exact same procedure to get to the content that I want to get to where I could have done it in an alternative way for not $45 a month. Yeah, that is insane. Yeah. But then if you watch an illegal sports stream, you have to deal with like literally Adolf Hitler in the chat on the side. Yeah. The Dude's most just, insane person you've never met. Dude dude was spamming. I'm trying to work. Okay. You know, I, I, I need to, I need to look in our uh, conversation our our football conversation because there was a, a a chatter it was like kibussy or something like that <laughs> there's a word that like, I, I i think it was kibussy which like is some variation of pussy right but right, like, yeah, yeah. i don't know I, I couldn't interpret it and he would not stop spamming it and there's no one stopping it he was doing it for over an hour i don't know if it was like a script this dude wrote i don't know which is worse if uh, to write a script to do that or to just sit there doing it yourself i just uh, that's another guy dude. i want to meet He's probably the same dude that rated Toy Story 2 5 out of 10. How do you feel about uh, uh, Tom Hanks' Big? I am, compared to the mean consumer, I am a Tom Hanks hater. Is it kind of like going from Big Trouble to just straight to Big? You're, yeah, you're yeah. a Hanks hater. That is a shocking development. No, I'm just getting it up on Wikipedia right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Don't really like Tom Hanks, man. I like it I, it's. You know what it up? is? I'm letting myself. I'm letting my feelings on Forrest Gump taint how I feel about his entire filmography, which is probably yeah. not fair. Yeah, I do think I mean, he's I, a great. I, I'm surprised actor. you don't like Forrest Gump either. I think Forrest Gump is it's like the it, Bon Jovi of movies, hmm. which is In to that, say overrated. And people are shocked when you say you don't like it. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, but it's, but it's bad. What's the best Tom Hanks movie? I mean, Saving Private Ryan is really good. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's a great movie. 
Mm-hmm. And the rest, I mean, Apollo 13 is an amazing movie. Yeah, it's pretty good. <sighs> He's got some pretty damn good movies, man. Like Philadelphia. Yeah. I haven't seen What's it, but I... It's, it's, it's quality. The, that's the boxing I movie, do, right? I, I even like, uh, what's the one where he's, is, the, is it just literally called The Terminal? Or what's the one where he's in the airport? Yeah, yeah, the, Krakosia, The Terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, that, that's a Eat pretty good shit. movie, too. Eat shit. Right, yeah. That's, that's a good, that's Steven Spielberg. Okay. Uh, I, I do want us to go for big, though. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you forget. Um, <laughs> I, if I remember correctly... Big is considered, despite the insane premise, Big is considered a critical success. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I like. I think that this might be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a 92 from the critics. Man, wow! Because I think this also might have been on the best 100 movies to watch on Disney Plus. Um, and then I am going to from the audience. You gotta like, catch me if you can too. Yeah. It's oh, good it's one. another good one. It's crazy that dude made the whole thing up. Yeah. Like well, he, honestly, he lied about impressive. being a liar. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just no, one that, more like, grift. That is remarkable. Like I, that, that we he won us all over by virtue of being like uh, remarkably shitty. I think that this is going to be in the same range as my cousin Vinny audience score. I'm gonna give it what you gave my cousin Vinny. I'm gonna give it an 87. Nice. That is wow. Okay, a ninety-two eighty-seven for the nineteen eighty-eight. America Tom loves Rupert. Tom Hanks. Yeah. If Tom no, Hanks ran for president, they would get rid of the constitutional amendment that put term limits in. <laughs> he would be president until he wanted to leave. <laughs> he has cross aisle appeal. Do you remember when he got COVID? It felt like that was it. He he got COVID and Rudy Gobert. Touch the microphones and the NBA shut down. That was all in right. like a twenty-four hour period. Right. When Tom like Hanks got like we COVID, were warning him already. I know we were like, "This dude is cooked, man." Yeah. Um, you know this. It is pretty clearly implied, if not outright shown, that uh, the the uh, the female lead, whose name I'm forgetting in this. Uh, movie uh, uh essentially uh, becomes a pedophile yes so i haven't seen it but that is one of two things i know about I it the other one is the big piano <laughs> yeah <laughs> two things anyone remembers about big um i don't think that really factored into anything uh as far as the critical reception goes though. no back in the day they were like, probably like that's just par for the course yeah. <laughs> they were like whoa that's weird it probably didn't even register. Because um, it's kind of like, isn't it? I haven't seen it. Is it a love story? Kind of? I mean, like, I think the, 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 the point of the movie, if, if there is one, I think is to be like, you know, like, don't, you, you don't take for granted what you got as, as a kid or an adult. You know, okay. like, there's advantages to both. But there's also like a weird uh, romance going on where, he, you know, he's, he's a child. He's a 13-year-old in, a, in an adult body, but I think she even, like, finds that out. Oh, that's got to be hard for her for to live sure. with. You can't just go live a normal life after you found yeah, out that, that you it's... did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Is she okay? I don't think so. I think she dies at the end. What? No. I'm no. I don't know. No shot, bro. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go... I'm going to go a little lower. I'm going to have to go a little lower on that. You go with a 92. It's tough to go higher than that. I'm going to say 84. 84 okay. critics score. Seems about right to me. All right. And then, 84. You know what? I'm going to go with another clone this time around. I'm going to say 84 critics, 84 audience. Okay. Double 84s. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Tom Hanks in big. Wow. Whole. Holy cow, that is... We have a new uh, front runner for highest-ranked film. I knew it. 98. 98. 98. Wow. That is, uh, that is startling. Uh, that's the critics, and then the audience score, 82. 80, well, you got the audience score on that got one. Got the audience sure. score. I was splitting that one again, but uh, I, I'm just kind of floored. Like, holy shit. 
I mean, it's a good movie, sure, but like, that's a that is an impressive score, man. I just I'm this is this the worst poster that has ever been made for any movie? Just just his grimace. Just a picture. Not even necessarily a smile. He, he almost looks like he's in pain. It it looks like the start of it's like a magazine ad for like a medicine, but they can't tell you what the medicine's for. <laughs> so it just says like you know, ask your doctor about this. He's like, I'm on. It's worth a try. I'm on proboscis. Are you? You never know. It's it, it's, it, it's multiple interpretations can be made of this face for sure. Especially knowing the, the, what the I know stage, about the movie. <laughs> the stage direction, I mean, might have just been like, look like you got a big secret. Mm -hmm. Look like you look like you, 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 you little sneaky little guy. Tom no. Hanks internal monologue. I've got shit in my pants. I've got shit in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you are up. Okay. I'm going to say. Hmm. Let's think about this. Let's think carefully about this. I'm going to say um, the 1998 science fiction movie based on the TV show, Lost in Space. Whoa, that is another. I, I, I've not even heard of this one. Starring Gary Oldman and Matthew LeBlanc, a.k.a. Ooh. Joey from Friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, um, Heather Graham. <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> I take it back, by the way. This is the uh, worst movie poster I've ever seen. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Bro, look Big's at this. Big's worse. Big's worse. What than that. even is this? It's Hold just on, text gotta, in space. I got to get a higher res one because that one is, I mean, you're going to fail in the pixel quality. Well, I mean, okay, they get they got the typical uh, like cast in the shot. Oh, maybe we're looking at a different. I'm, my Wikipedia poster is like just a metallic L and a metallic S. Oh yeah, no, that's the one oh, that okay. loaded up for me too. I was just they they got alternatives, but they're not much better. And then it just says Danger Will Robinson. That's this movie. That's this movie. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That gives me a different frame of reference here yeah sorry chad i can't find one that's bigger than like 180 by 300 for the this it, it did come out uh, like 25 years ago yeah yeah let's see yeah okay so this at least had enough impact for that line to have so i'm gonna i'm gonna save you from yourself a little bit because this movie did not originate the line. The line is oh. from the TV show from like the 1960s. Okay. So that's, yeah, that does change things a bit. Steve this film has shine. no no lasting legacy whatsoever. And you can no, take that, that for what that you does, will. I mean, that certainly <laughs> helped, makes me feel a little bit better about my complete unfamiliarity with it. Should I know Stephen Hopkins? Is that like a... That's the director. I, don't I know do if not. He's done anything. Okay. You know what? We, you you stay there. I'm going to look up yeah. Stephen Hopkins here. I, I, I'm happy to give you more information. Please, yeah. I am. Uh, I, although honestly, like I feel weirdly more confident about being in the dark here. Well, does it help you to know that he directed A Nightmare on Elm Street Five: The Dream Child? Oh yeah, a thousand percent. He also directed several episodes of Twenty Four. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is going to be... Tell you what. Let's call this, like... No lasting legacy. The, the, the entirety of the production seems pretty forgettable. Let's go with, like, a 55 critics reception here. Something along those lines. And then this does kind of feel like a movie that might have a few people going to bat for it. So I'm going to go a little higher on the audience. I'm going to go with, like, a 67 Okay, 55 so critics, for the critics. 55, audience 67, yeah. I, having lived through this, I have a scar of, of, for this movie as well. I'm going to spoil it because it's not very good. Okay. Um, Gary Oldman plays Dr. Smith or whatever his name is. He gets halfway through the movie, he gets bit by an alien creature, like a bug. Um, okay. And he goes, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. And then 
they kind of like time travel and you figure out that Gary Oldman, he actually is now transformed into like an alien bug and it's so scary. Like when I was, a, when I was 10, I got nightmares watching yeah, this. in the back seat of the car for that exactly. one. Exactly. But the word, no, the worst part is I watched it on our 19 inch TV and it still scared me. That's how you know. <laughs> That's like what we had. We were rocking one of those with like the built in VCR. Yeah, like yeah. Our, so, like when we were moving like state to state uh, for the military days, we would always have like the, the van set up with the family where we had like a blanket uh, draped between the middle and the back seat. Of course. So, we had like yeah. a little makeshift movie theater with the, uh, with the 17 inch VCR TV combo propped up on the blanket. So, it was Dude, that's kind of sick. It was pretty good. Yeah. We had honestly like the, the, the difficulty of cross country moving multiple times as children was kind of uh, outweighed by the good memories that we created with, with like the road trips and like swimming in hotel pools and stuff like that. Something like a hotel pool does hit different. Also, the artist hotel pools is quite good. I've just never as an aside. I've never heard of them. I recommend them. My problem with the uh, hotel pool, the hot tubs have gotten too popular. Yeah. I feel like when I was a kid, there was always like one old dude in the hot tub with a gold oh, chain. that's true. And true. now yeah. every hot tub is at capacity like 100% of the time. I can't even remember the last time I got in the hot tub, dude. I hate them. I, they always feel like... <laughs> I think I get hot faster than the average person. I always feel like yeah. I'm going to have a heart attack. I mean, it is just like human soup, too. Like I get in and then I'm like, after a minute, I'm like, I have to get out and jump in like ice water. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing you were never one to like... Well, this might have been a uni uh, uniquely Utah experience as well, but my parents had a hot tub, and as kids, we would get in the hot tub and then get out and, like, roll around in the snow. And, like, That's the sick. And make it back that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. All right. I honestly, I'm going to go crazy. I think this has an eight on Rotten Whoa, Tomatoes, like, from the God critics. damn. Okay, okay. But I definitely, I, I think it's going to be, rev I, I'm going to take it a step. I'm going to take it down to five. That's wow, and there's no games reason why I would do that. I just I'm going nuts on the table. I think so this confident. is yeah, reviled okay. by by critics. My goodness. Now I think this is one of those situations where the audience is going to like it more, but I certainly I wouldn't put it in the as a red tomato. I think it's going to be firmly in green splat territory. Mm -hmm. I'm starting I'm, to feel bad about my 67. I'm going to give it a. 41. I'm going to go 5 and 41. Okay. Okay. That is, yeah, that is a, if you, I'm, if you get this on that critics score, I will be, I'm, I'm going to have to give you bonus points, I feel like, because that is a bold choice. I mean, it's, it's low, but this movie is really bad. <laughs> but it's, apparently it's not that bad. Wait, okay. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking at the different version of it. Yeah, the I'm, TV I'm, I'm show... Every yeah, TV right. show on Rotten Tomatoes is 100%. Right. <laughs> for some reason. 27% from the critics. Boy, so you still got it. I did. It turns out five That's is still incredible. closer. <laughs> and the 24, rare, can I say rare audience uh, dub? Because this yeah. movie is trash, but they trashed it even more than the critics trashed it. Yeah, man. Goddamn. That's brutal. So what was it? It was a uh, repeat the scores real quick. 27 for the critics. Yeah. And 24 for the audience. Holy cow. This is also the most photoshopped movie poster I've ever seen in my entire life. There's a, uh, apparently there's a 2018 version of it on think, Netflix. Yeah, the, the TV show apparently is pretty not bad. Yeah, they got an 84. But I don't know if they ever made, like, I think they did a second season and then they did the Netflix thing where, yeah. like, you know, the day after it came out, they were like, it's been watched by more than 137 billion eyeballs. And then yeah. two days after it comes out, they're like, we regret to inform you that it has been canceled and everybody yep. involved with it has been killed. Yep, exactly. Womp womp. All right. Uh, I think that brings us back to me, right? Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm loving, I'm being insulted by this Rotten Tomatoes algorithm. You remember the movie Showtime with Robert De Niro and Eddie Murphy? Uh, vaguely, yeah. I, I've wiped it from my memory completely. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I'm even thinking of the right movie. Lights? No, I, I am not. I was thinking of... How the fuck was I thinking of Hairspray? No, I was 100% <laughs> thinking of the movie Hairspray. <laughs> Which, spoiler, 
Eddie Murphy is not in it. <laughs> oh, man. Nor is Robert Nor, De Niro. I don't, I don't believe Robert I De Niro's that. in that either. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know how, because I was definitely thinking of um, uh, John Travolta's character in Hairspray. Oh, That's man. what that led me to, and I, I, I got no shame about it. Oh, boy. Speaking of being shameless, how about a little Robin Hood men in tights? All right. This is a tough one for me. Yeah. Robin Hood. What's your experience with Robin Hood men in tights? This is the parody, the satire. 100%. Okay. I remember that my parents rented this from the video store, and I watched it, but I do not recall uh, anything about it, and I don't believe I've seen it since. This says John it's, Malkovich in it, or is he in the Kevin Costner one? No, yeah, I think you're thinking of the other one. This is the this is Carrie Elwes, the uh, Princess Bride dude. Yeah, who's the yeah. lead. And then it's got Dave Chappelle, uh, Richard Lewis, who I think is from what the heck was he in? Curb your oh, enthusiasm. Curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then oh, Isaac Hayes was in this. That's weird. Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tracy Ullman. You know what's yeah, funny? So. I, as a kid, I never realized that this poster was like satirical. Like right. it, I just thought, like, wow, he must be really good. He's firing like He's just a bunch a badass, of arrows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he looks pretty confident about it. I um, I remember loving this movie, man. I don't know if I don't know if I could still enjoy it today, but I, I definitely remember having fond memories of this movie. Mel Brooks is funny. Yeah. My parents I mean? went crazy for this. So I think right after Robin Hood Men in Tights, he made a movie with Leslie Nielsen called Dracula Dead and Loving It. And I remember watching that with my parents and my grandparents and all four of them like died laughing. Yeah, yeah, then I, yeah. as an adult, I like looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes. The shit has like a two out of 100. <laughs> 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 Dude, I thought Leslie Nelson at least would be. It's like, it's like a 50-point boost he's, on his own. He's really funny, but he has been in a lot of garbage. Can I, yeah. Chad, I, need, I need your phone a friend on this one. He also did a movie that takes place on like um, an intergalactic cruise that came out maybe 2001, 2002 that was insanely garbage. And my parents rented it from the video store, and they died laughing again. <laughs> I love that. But I can't remember the name at all. Oh, that's so good. Okay. He did, yeah, he did fucking Naked Gun, Airplane, Police Squad. 2001, A Space Travesty. That's Oh, it. man, that's good. <laughs> I like that. All right. I, uh, okay, I think that this is Mel Brooks, but not at his most well-respected. I'm going to say critics gave it a 64. Sometimes okay. when, when satire hits, it can get into the 100s, but sometimes it's, it's hit or miss. Yeah. And then for the audience, I'm going to say that this is a, a likable movie. It's, it's easy to laugh alongside of. I'm going to give it a 73 for the audience. Nice. I like that. 64, you said? 64 critics? and 73. Nice. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to go a little higher either way. I want to go with a 71? 71 critics from score? the critics. 71 okay. critics. Yeah, let's go up to like a... I think, this, I think this is something the audience is, even today, are likely scoring fairly high. Mm. I'm trying to remember, like, there's not really anything all that problematic either especially for a movie that came out about this time and to be like a parody movie it's it's a pretty tame robin it continues to get more based in in the modern sense exactly so i'm gonna go with like a 79 audience score on this one 71 and 79 that. so and then it was your 64 and 70 73 two? 73 I, th I think i got a shot on this one at least Oh, oh, man. oh boy. Oh boy. Did you get there already? I didn't know. I'm just looking at the poster. Wow. This was a critical failure. 42. 42? On the tomato meter for this one. Okay, I'm after pretty... this, look up Dracula Dead and Loving It. All right, yeah. But uh, <laughs> let's, uh, I think we're splitting again on this one. I think you got the critics. Uh, 81. 81 from the, for the audience. audience. You were like, we were very close. Very close, yeah. 
I'll take another split there. Okay, so it was a space travesty, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That should be yeah. like a 3% from the critics. I'm going to yeah. say 21% from the audience. Uh, no critical rating. <laughs> it's got three reviews. It's a Canadian classic. And uh, 17. That's audience really... Score. You yeah, know how bad a movie has to be for 17% of that's people to like it? fucking low. There's 10,000 <laughs> ratings, dude. There's a lot of people. This movie went crazy this. in Scarborough, man. Okay. Oh, man. That's, that's, uh, that's the lowest audience score I think we've seen today, too, isn't it? It should be like the lowest audience score ever invented. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, you're up. I'm going to hit you with... Um, let me think about this. I'm trying to pull, pull from a theme. Yeah. We've done Adam Sandler. We've done Jim Carrey. <laughs> this is the two. We've done Tom Hanks. How Mel Hanks, we've done Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Have we done, we've done mm -hmm. Mel Brooks. Have we done Mel Gibson? Oh, right. Yeah, we did Mel Brooks. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I got him confused. We two different. Done Gibson, yeah. don't, don't try to Gibson would, my I, Brooks. It's an insult to Brooks. That. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we haven't done a Gibson, though. We haven't done a Gibson. If we were to do a Gibson. Well, Passion of the Christ. <laughs> I was thinking about <laughs> it, but I'm not that well versed in the Gibson filmography. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I, we've, we've all seen the one, I'm sure, but. Are we talking about Braveheart? No, I'm talking about Passion. No, yeah, Braveheart. <laughs> I, I've, seen, I've seen half of Braveheart, I think. I've seen Braveheart. You know what? Let's go, let's go with something in that vein. Okay. The number one movie to test out your uncle's Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound system he put in his home theater. Mm. Can, can you guess what it is? Highlander? You have a cool-ass uncle. Because <laughs> I was thinking of Gladiator. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. Absolutely. You my, just got me in that ballpark. My uncle doesn't know shit about Highlander. Yeah, mine, mine died. Well. <laughs> uh, okay, Gladiator. Yeah, I have seen this as well. Uh, let me get that Ridley get Scott classic. Up, though. Yeah, it's a good movie, man. Russell Crowe. Joaquin mm -hmm. Phoenix, Connie Nielsen, Thomas Aranya, Elrata Aranya, Jaman Hunsu. Ah, inspired by Daniel P. Mannix's 1958 book, Those About to Die. Yeah, subsequently titled The Way of the Gladiator. That's how that you know your sense, movie yeah. made an impact. This bro went <laughs> back the name of the 40 years book. later. He's like, this book's <laughs> actually called Gladiator. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Oh boy, this has got to be, this has got to be out there. I would be shocked if this was not at least eighty plus, both critical and audience reception. This this was, this movie still talked about. I feel to this like day. a Hans Zimmer soundtrack, dude. Come on, that's a that's an instant plus twenty. Ridley Scott keeps chasing the dragon. Once every three yeah. movies, he's like, it's Gladiator again. <laughs> What has he put out since then? Dude, the last duel is really, really good. Really? It is two hours and 30 minutes long. So it's that's the uh, it's a long one. That's the uh, Matt Damon one, right? It's Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Neither of them talk in a Boston accent. Oh, come on. It's it's Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Adam Driver. And it's oh, a little, wow. it's a little like you see the same events from multiple perspectives and in seeing it each time it illuminates something different about the okay. event but also okay. raises the ambiguity about the event yeah that does sound pretty good i'm gonna go with i'm gonna get an 86 86 critics score i think that's a great guess and i'm gonna say audiences is a little lower i'm gonna put that on an 81 I'm pretty happy with that. It's tough to get any meat off those bones. I picked them dry. Here's what I think. Here's my understanding of Gladiator as someone who's seen it many times. When it came out, best movie ever made. Yeah. That held for six, seven years. Then people started to be like, actually, it's not quite historically. We, everyone became a realism Andy for a while. Yeah. Gladiators didn't actually fight like that, and actually, blah, 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 many of the gladiators didn't live in prison. They all got to live as celebrities, and then. And why weren't they naked? I want to see Russell Crowe's dong. <laughs> well, that be that as it may. Um, 
I, I think as time has gone on, we've gotten out of the valley and people are like, this is true cinema again. Right. So I, on, on 86, I think 86 is a, is a great guess. <sighs> That's tough, man. Can I also say, just reading, back, dude. reading this synopsis, I'm losing my mind. It's the second highest grossing film of 2000 behind Mission Impossible 2? Oh, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> what? I mean, that's just... That's Cruz, dude. The only the bad one? I mean, oh. it's still like... He, he put out the Top Gun made like a billion dollars a couple years ago, ago didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did make he a lot of money. still got it, man. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to... I have nuts on the table. I, I, though it pains me, I'm going to take an, a flat 80 for Gladiator. Okay, okay. In that's my, that's in about my, where you got to go, I think, for the gamesmanship element. That's what they, I would... I think it's going to be 84, but yeah. I'm not going to play 85. It just makes you like a scumbag. If this was The Price is Right and there was a dining set on the line, then yeah, yeah. I'm going $1 over. But, and then and the you critics... you can tell looking at me that I need that dining set. <laughs> I always wonder who's on the Price is Right, and they're like, "Oh, sick! I don't have a bed and a dresser." Like, wouldn't <laughs> that just be I'm, annoying? I'm You're glad like, to "Have an extra." Now. <laughs> like, I won the prize, and now I gotta like sell my old furniture, unbox yeah, the new stuff, and build it. Like, exactly. That's no fun, man. Mm -hmm. Like a car, I mean, at least you can, you know, you can hawk it. But well, the the thing about the car is they get fucked on taxes, right? Like, yeah, you probably end up paying more for the taxes on the car than you make from it. It's true, and it's never like. You know, even uh, like a Honda Civic, it's always like a, a two door rear wheel drive manual Chevy Spark. <laughs> and then <laughs> like you're like just trying to get rid of like in my head, I'm like a car is at least twenty thousand dollars. And then it turns out that son of a bitch is like thirteen thousand eight hundred and sixty two dollars. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, my cents. God. Yeah. OK, I'm going to say it. I'm going to so say the audience wanna... is unassailable on this one. Though. I'm going to say the audience loves it. I'm going to say they're at a, an 80. I'm going to go 89. Might be the highest score we've seen that's about, today. Yeah, that's about where I pegged you on that one. Yeah. So that's uh, you got an 80 and an 89. An 80 and an 89. 86 and an 81. All right. Let's hear it. All oh, right. I have to look it up. My yeah, mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone will get it eventually. Rotten Tomatoes. Gladiator, the year 2000. You're so fucking good at this, and I don't know why I'm surprised. Holy, I am. <laughs> it's insane, dude. It's a 79 <laughs> from the critics and an you're, 87 from the audience. You're a grand total of three percentage points away from nailing it for both. That is, that is outrageous. I didn't realize he, he is MF Doom. Oh, yeah. But is that? Whoa! Hold on a second. Is that actually what it's? That's Russell Crowe. Yeah, I know, but that's that. No, that's that's his mask. That's, that's the mask. mask. Yeah. I didn't realize that's modeled after that. hundred percent. That is the exact same mask. That's fun to know. I had no idea that was the case. I had no. I always thought it was a Doctor Doom thing. Well, I thought it was like a plague doctor mask. Or I don't. I, I never really thought about it much. Now that I'm thinking about it now. Uh, yeah, if you. Google it. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Okay, uh, I think I'm up. Um, do you happen to know? I, I feel like this might be one that you actually just like looked up out of curiosity. Do you happen to know the Rotten Tomato score for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie? No. Uh, okay, good. Let's do that. <laughs> um, but I can I can hazard a guess. I, I would hope you would. Yeah. I think this is a great choice. I think you've cho chosen a, a, a very interesting one to discuss. Because my so hunch too. is that, first off, I do know that this made, it became Blumhouse's highest grossing yes. uh, movie theatrically. Wildly successful, yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I can't shake the feeling that critics would not know what to do with this irrespective yeah. of the quality of the film. Yeah. I'm going to say I, the audience is the crazy part. I think the audience is going to be much higher than the critics. But I, I don't agree. think it's going to be like in the 70s. So I'm going to I'm going to go audience. People are going to be surprised by this one. I'm going to say 56. I don't think it crosses in the red tomato. 
Okay. And I think it's going to be, from the critics, 20... I'm going to go 20... I, I can't bring myself to do 28. I'm going to do 27. 27 critics, 56 audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I actually... I, I can't fight the feeling that this is like the audience score is going to blow us away. Like, I, th I think that I think there's going to be a, a large five nights fan base. 80 plus. Yes. Or like I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go 76. 76. For the audience okay. score. I, do, I do think that it's going to like absolutely shock us how high that audience score is. And I think you're in the ballpark with critics. I, I can't imagine this being over a 50. I would be shocked by that as well. Let's go with like a 42. 42. 42 critics. I love that neither of us have seen it, right? No, absolutely So we, we talked about Gladiator for like 11 minutes. Yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's were like, just send it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, I feel pretty good about this. All right. Five Nights at Freddy's. It's kind of like five months ago. Starring Josh Hutcherson? Yes. And yeah. Matthew Lillard. I, I am vindicated. Oh, okay. Audience score, 87. That shit is fraudulent. Insane. You can take your that point. That's fraudulent. I want to see verifiable. I, I want to see seen. IP address audits <laughs> for all of the voters. I, want, I don't want to see any duplicated IP addresses. That is nuts. I want to see a piece of photo identification from everybody that voted. <laughs> Remind me your critical score. 27. 27. You got me there. It's a 32. 32. On the tomato meter. Yeah. Not a big surprise on that one, but that audience score, yeah, I, I, I was pretty ready to be floored by that. 87. It was nutty. Forgive me, I'm not trying to diminish the fact that you had your finger on the pulse. Is it possible that 20% of those reviews are ironic tens? You I know would, how I people leave like... It's not even possible, but likely, yeah. It's like, you know how Steam reviews with like 10,000 hours, they give it a thumbs down and go like, it's not very good? Yeah. Or they'll review like a calculator app and be like, thumbs down, no sex. This movie has everything for the fans of this beloved worldwide phenomenon of a video game franchise. When we watched this movie opening night, the crowd was insane to be from <laughs> beginning to the very, very end credits scene. Yo, what about the movie, bro? I think this is the best video game movie of 2023. I think that's correct. Like, I, th they're not wrong in that assessment. Well, uh, people like the Super Mario Brothers movie. I haven't seen uh, it myself, okay, true. Yeah, they actually do have some valid competition <laughs> from that year. Uh, Matthew Lillard nailed it. <laughs> And the practical effects from Jim Henson's Creature Shop was possibly the best thing about the movie. That is cool. I don't know, man. I think this is just heartfelt praise from the people that love it. It made $300 million, which is pretty... That's fucking crazy. That is insane, <laughs> man. It had a $20 million budget, too. That's like... I thought it'd Holy be a higher cow. budget than that, at least. Good God. All right, there you go. Five Nights at Freddy's. I, uh, I literally thought it was just about a puppet that goes insane. There's a whole lore here. There's a, a guy, the guy who made the puppets put trap some people's souls in the, in the puppets or something. Yeah, some saw shit? What the hell? And it is like one of them is based on like his late wife or something like that. There was a, a fire at a birthday party 30 years ago. It's, it is violent. Holy shit. That's all I know. Straight up getting murdered in this movie. I, I legitimately thought it was just like... What's it rated? NC-17. Oh, God. <laughs> X. Yeah. Do they still do that? I think so. I don't think they actually like, put them in theaters, though. You remember when they used to come out with like PG-13 comedies, and then when they came out on DVD, it would be like the unrated version. The unrated. Yeah. Uncut, and it would, uncensored. It would be like exactly the same movie, but halfway through, someone would pop a titty out. There's a booby. Yeah, yeah and you'd be like, wow, Red <laughs> Band. Got the real experience, bro. <laughs> 
Holy okay. cow. You probably got time for like one more each, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Five yeah, Nights at Freddy's. You sent me for a loop with that. Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, okay. How about... Um, Take I like back. that you're we're we're kind of like on a spectrum here. You're bringing us back in like the I'll 80s say. and 90s, and I keep bringing us back to the modern. <laughs> well, I'm going to split the difference on this one. How about okay. School of Rock? Oh, I love it, dude. Still happy to sit down and watch this in its entirety any day. Great, mil- great movie. I mean this as a compliment. You strike me as a Jack Black enjoyer. I love Jack Black. Me too. He's a. I mean. I haven't really ever like gone out of my way to consume his stuff, but everything that I've ever seen of him, I love. Like, like including like his YouTube channel. For God's sake, like he's just a, he's such a fun presence. How do you not like Jack Black? He's That's great. Precisely my thoughts. You know what I just noticed? I never realized until you know looking at it now. The poster is meant to look like a Rolling Stone magazine cover. Oh well, yeah, 100%. that's a nice little nod. I, as a kid, I never noticed that. Yeah, no, totally. Seeing that. That's cool. What are all these kids are up to? I know because of Cine to an Ertl, I know this has Miranda Cosgrove. Yes. Who then became iCarly. And then became iCarly again iCarly, uh, a couple years ago. iCarly uh, Go to Japan is, iCarly... is a Cine Nerdle kill shot. Oh, that's like the actual new one. I think it's from 2007, actually. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, they, they rebooted the TV series, though. They, they mm. like, have a lot of the same cast again. They couldn't bring back, what's her name? Worms. Um, uh, Janet McCurdy, uh, who wrote that uh, book that was really good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad my mom died. The, her little, oh, uh, I did. see, I know her and I know the book, but I did not know the, I did not know that she was her. Yeah, she, uh, well, she uh, describes in the book, actually, the fact that she didn't want to go back on the show because, you know, it felt like a regression, but... Yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah. Um, man, yeah, I love this movie. School of Rock, I think, had to have been well-received. I think this might even be, like, one of the higher rankings we see today. Not a lot to hate about this one, right? Like, I'm like, like, we've had like the Sandler hate, we've had the Hanks hate, which is you know like rational or not is <laughs> is a factor. I don't think that I don't think Jack Black has the same kind of detractors, you know. I think that society tried to hate Jack Black in the same way that they did to Jim Carrey, but it didn't take. I think yeah, he no. he he tanked it and shrugged it off. I mean, Nacho Libre for God's sake, come on. I think this is going to be like. 87 87 audience let's go with like an uh you know actually and my, my uh the the evil realistic part of my brain is bringing me back down here and i think actually that this critic score is going to be a little lower let's give it like a 73 73 critics 87 audience okay i, I do i do think that audience if that audience is below 80 i'm gonna be upset i think your audience score is bang on I think there's not a lot to, to gain there. I actually, I'm going to take it a step higher on the critics. Okay. I think this is one of the most likable. It's a Rotten Tomatoes classic. Because it might not be anybody's, well, maybe it might be some people's favorite movie. But Anybody favorite movie, School of Rock, hands up? I bet there's a few. But it's, it's a hard movie to dislike. I, yeah. I, I have a hard time seeing anybody with a, with a soul watching this and going, ah, that wasn't a good use of my time. So I'm going to take it up to, I'm going to go into 89 on the critics. Sure. And on the audience, I really feel like you're on, on an 87, you're in a good spot. You're going to go higher? You know what? I'm, I'm going to play high-low with you. I'm going to drop an 88 on it. I mean, if Five Nights at Freddy's was an 87, this should be about 132. So I agree. Yeah, that, that mathematically checks out mm-hmm. to me. Uh, you're up. Okay, Five Nights... Oh, sorry. <laughs> School of Rock. Five Nights at the School I gotta of watch Rock. So Five Nights at Freddy's. Apparently, it's the best movie ever made. Yeah, I guess so. School of Rock. I'm going to look up what the uh, main kid from School of Rock is doing while you're doing that. What what did I miss? Okay, School of Rock, ninety two on the critic score. Wow, I love that. That's shocking, but that's fantastic. You're not ready for this. I don't know if I can be the bearer of bad news. 
Don't tell me. First the, off, you, you get the below, point. You get the below point. below 80? It's, I do get the point. Okay, that's good. It's below 80? Split. It's below 75? What the fuck? It's below 70? Don't stop this. It's below 65. You have to stop doing this. This is causing me physical pain. It's 64. What the fuck is wrong with people? How, do you, how does this happen? I don't think that this website can be relied on as, as like a, uh, an accurate aggregation anymore. What the hell happened? One second here. I'm, Who, I'm who's scrolling. responsible for this? Who do I have to write an angry letter to? I'm scrolling down to the user reviews. This has got 250,000 ratings. <laughs> it has 64? This is crazy. No. This, this, this is the angriest I've been today by far. This is not acceptable. Don't get Every me started. Every review I'm reading is like four or five stars. Like, yeah, it's great. I love it. There's not even any bad reviews I can see. Sort by. There's no sort by. God damn it. Marisol was cooking. What did Marisol say? I'm genuinely baffled as to why rock. School of Rock is so well received. Linklater's tribute vehicle to a beloved genre plays like a B-rate effort that Disney dusted off, patched together, and pushed out in the wake of Freaky Friday's punkish success. Would you go back no. to the university, no. Point Dexter? Get out of here with that absolute you nonsense. Nerd, nerd alert. Do me a quick favor and go, uh, Google Joey Gatos Jr., by the way, who was the uh, lead guitarist in that movie, and look at what he looks like now and uh, be pleasantly surprised. Joey? Because he has, he has become Jr. his character, as far as I can tell. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. I'm a big fan of his look now. He looks... <laughs> this is the dumbest thing to say about a person. It's like he looks the same, but older. <laughs> He looks, like, yeah. he looks like the kid version Maybe of himself like if he became an adult. <laughs> Legit rock star. Joey was That's born on All April right, 18th. Up. Oh, did I, did I delete uh, myself? This be my last one. I think I did. Worth 10 points apiece. Hang on, hang on. I got I to gotta say this, man. This is so good. Yeah. Joey Gatos Jr. was born April 18th, 1991. He started playing the guitar at the age of three, but didn't really get in touch with it until he was about eight years old or so. Lazy! Yeah, dude, dude I mean... Took the dude five years to get in touch with the guitar? Come on, bro. Just get all the breaks, huh? All right. <laughs> all right, let me, get, let me get one of my best here to round things out. I was tempted to go uh, with one or both of Barbenheimer. Just to, mm, oh, I think you know I'd what? Actually, I have this, I have this in my list, and this was also just recommended in chat. So this mm -hmm. does feel like a good way to close out here. Okay, uh, let's go with uh, Johnny Knoxville's The Ringer. Oh man, mm -hmm. you're gonna get me in trouble because this is a my conversation. Favorite dude. movie ever. <laughs> it is. What? No, oh, no, I love it's that. not. It's not. Oh. Um, I was gonna be so excited about that conversation. So this is the movie where. Uh, Johnny Knoxville pretends to qualify for the Special Olympics so he can win some easy money. Correct. He, he owes, or sorry, no, his uncle Gary owes $40,000 in gambling debts okay. and suggests that they fix the Special Olympics in order to solve both of their financial problems. It, irrespective of everything else, how yeah. crazy is it that Johnny Knoxville had... And continues to have like some crossover success as an actor. I don't get how it happened. The dude was like taking shots to the testicles with a paintball gun, and yeah. Hollywood said, "I need that guy to be like the lead actor in this like, movie." When, was the, when did the switch take place? Because it was like a direct transition. I, his first film role, as far as I can tell, was in Men in Black Two. Okay, yeah, which is. Remarkable in and of itself. Is he the guy who gets his head blown off and then it grows back? Or is that... I'm thinking think of Tony Shell, Isn't it? He, 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 he's a guy who talks really fast? No, is he, he is... The, wait, okay. He, oh, Johnny Knoxville's the guy with two heads. I knew it was something uh, head-related with this guy. Okay, okay. And then uh, Dirty Shame and Walking Tall, Dukes mm. of Hazard, and then The Ringer. Like... He'd only really had like bit roles. Yeah, I think this was his first grandpa. lead role, right? 
Well, he's the oh, lead yeah. in Dukes of Hazard, but the movie shouldn't exist. Right. But he acts circles around Jessica Simpson. I mean, he's top billing in Dukes of Hazard. I mean, it's him and Sean William Scott and, uh, uh, yeah, okay. and Jessica <laughs> Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> just top Billy by default. <laughs> um, I mean, okay, so, like, I do think that this movie was a success. I don't. I, I doubt that the the critical response was very favorable, but I, I do. Th- I, I think it did well. Like it was talked about. It was people. People liked it. I think, but I, I, I'm pretty sure the critical. Here, give give me the disadvantage because you suggested the movie. Okay. I'll I'll go first. Yeah. And I'm willing to say that the critics, I bet they did not vibe with this. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to put it at a at a 32. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to think that the audience this whole Five Nights at Freddy's thing has uh it's really thrown a stick in the fucking gears, <laughs> it's man. It's thrown my That's compass sure. <laughs> all it's spinning around. I think that it's going to have a 70 even from the audience. I'm going 32-70. 32-70, okay. Okay. I'm going to go for a uh, possibly baffling move here, but I'm going to say that the critics' response to this was not bad. It's not good, but I don't think it was bad. I think it was like a 55 this is probably like critics. the only movie where people would say like you can't make movies like this anymore, but it's actually yeah. true. Right. Yeah. No, like you can't release this today. Someone would blow saying. up your house. Absolutely. Uh, audience, you went 70, right? 70 from the audience, yeah. I'll hit you with a 60. Okay. 60 okay. audience. Pretty pretty close. 60 audience. All right, let me get this looked up. Keep in mind, these are worth 10 points each, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's only fair. A 40 on the the tomato meter. From the critics, okay. From the critics. So I guess it's still out of reach for me. But the audience score is worth 20 points, as we know. (laughs) They're 21. (laughs) Hey, and the audience score is 68. Well, wow. okay. Well, unfortunately, did I say 20? I meant negative yeah, 20. Negative 20, right. Yeah, so that does put you at a, at a, at a resounding uh, nine, which means at the end of the day here, I did end up winning. Wow, look at me go. All right. <laughs> a fun, even fight. All things, no, okay. You, you, Steve, you got a- Steve reluctantly enters the Special Olympics under the guise of being a high-functioning young man named Jeffy Dahmer. <laughs> This movie has come true. No, it hasn't. (laughs) (laughs) This has never happened. (laughs) Oh, man. Final score, Bear 12, Northern Lion 26. Bear clap. Well done. Well done. Good game. Good game. Shouldn't be surprised. The competitive side of me was hoping we make it like a little more respectable, but you didn't. You didn't run away with it at the end. That was fun, man. I enjoyed that. I I loved this. I now I have a a piece of paper as a keepsake as well with all of our oh, scores written down. That's adorable. It that's actually good. looks like like a degenerate gambler sheet from uh, like a horse racing track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I thought we could either do this again at some point, or I thought it would be fun to do uh, guess the Metacritic, the Metacritic score. See for- now that yeah. is a. That's a whole different beast because that's actually like how people that's nuts on the table. It's not yes. did you thumbs up, thumbs down. It's like, is this past lives or lost in space? Mm-hmm. I, I would 100% be down. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool.